to speak, begin to speak to that problem, begin to speak to that issue, begin to speak to that challenge, begin to speak to that crisis that is happening in your life. Speak what you want to say, speak what you want to see, say what you want to see. We have been looking at a series of teachings titled, What Should You Do? The Believer's Response to the Crisis of Life. What should you do? The Believer's Response to the Crisis or the Issues of Life. This is a practical teaching that will change your life. I believe we're on part four now, but part three or part four. Oh, part five, part five. We are on part five now. Wow, wow, wow. How time flies. Glory to God. We are on part five now on knowing what you should do when the storms of life hit. When the storms of life, not if. It's a matter of when and not if. And I'm not a prophet of doom and I'm not prophesying negatively to your life. But I'm only making you aware of what Jesus said to us in John 16, 33, that in this world, we will, we will experience, we will see tribulations, but we should be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. The world is having trouble. There is trouble in every nation of the world. And God is telling us this through this series of teachings, how to respond to the teachings. My text this morning will be from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read from verse 33 to verse 54. 1 Samuel chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 33 to verse 54. 1 Samuel chapter 17 from verse 33 verse 54 hallelujah and Saul said to David thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth and he a man of war from his youth and David said unto Saul thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And these uncircumcised Philistines shall be as one of them, seeing he had defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him. When the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and Rudy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staffs? And the Philistines caused David by his gods. Verse 44, And the Philistine said unto David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistines, 
Thou comest to me with the sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, come on, say with me, this day. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and to all that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord severed not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and it fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheet thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharim. Sharim, even unto Gat and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tent. Finally, verse 54. And David took the head of the Philistines and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. What should you do? The believer's response to the issues of life. I've said to us in the introductory part of this message that what you do in the face of battles, in the face of the challenges of life, determines three things. Number one, it determines who comes out successful, who wins this battle. Number two, it determines how long the battle will last. And number three, it determines if the battle will happen again. What you do in the face of challenges of life determines three things, and I'm going to repeat them. Number one, it determines who comes out victorious at the end. What you do in the face of battles of life determines how long the battle will last. Do something and the battle will be shortened. Do nothing, the battle or the challenge will last longer. When you have leg pain, if you refuse to take medication, chances are the leg pain will not go. It will only get worse. If you seek medical attention on time, you have the chances of being healed. And of course, God can heal you supernaturally. And number three, what you do in the face of battle determines if the battle will repeat itself. This morning, I want to share with us on a subtopic titled The testimony response the testimony response the teaching series is titled what should you do and we have been looking at the various things you should do when you are faced with the challenges of life if you missed any of the messages from part one to part four please go and watch it online it's going to bless you when the challenge of life hits some people cry and the battle still remains <laughs> for example Hannah was crying every time she went to Shiloh. She didn't have a child. She would go there every year. She would cry and cry and cry. She would get back home. Nothing happens. She would come back the next year. She would cry again. Until one Shiloh, she decided to do something different. Hmm? So the crying in the face of battle does not solve that problem. Some people blame god it doesn't solve the problem some people blame others some people are just quiet it doesn't change anything one thing you have to do in the face of challenges of life 
is to remember, recall what God has done in the past and say to that battle, that situation of life, the same God that did this for me in the past will do it again and I will overcome you. That's essentially what David did in this scripture that we read that won him the victory. I pray in the name of Jesus, every one of us will win every challenge currently facing us in life in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I say this to you by way of starting this message or by way of introduction? That in the face of battle, silence is a statement of defeat. In the face of battles, silence is a statement of defeat. In the face of any battles in life, silence is a loud statement of defeat. When you keep quiet, you have signed over the victory to the enemy. When you keep quiet in the face of the battles of life, you have automatically granted the opposition the victory. Silence is a loud and authorized statement of defeat. It is important to know that wars, W-A-R-S, are first won by words than by sword. You win wars first by your words before you engage your sword. This story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17 showed us how you can overcome any problems in life. Some people put in their sword first before engaging their words. No! Your words must go first before you engage the sword. <laughs> Glory be to God. We must know that wars, challenges of life, are first won by words before the sword is engaged. When you open your mouth and speak against any mountain surrounding you or facing you, the Bible tells us they will be removed. Luke chapter 21, verse 15. If, if you can read for us in the audience here, Luke 21 and verse 15, followed by Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Luke 21, verse 15. Luke 21 and 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, mm -hmm. which all your adversaries will not be able to con contradict mm -hmm. or resist. Hallelujah. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. And that mouth is to win any battle in life. That mouth and that wisdom is to conquer any Goliath of life. That mouth and that wisdom is to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. When you are surrounded by battles, things are just happening that you, have, you seemingly have no control over. When it is going from one bad news to the other, like it happened to Job, in one day he received four bad news. One day. If in your life, maybe you haven't had a good year, and this is the fifth month, things are just happening. Bad incidences, bad reports are happening. If you dare to keep quiet, you have signed over the certificate of victory to the enemy. But if you open your mouth and you speak against the mountains, my Bible tells you, my Bible tells me that they're, they're going to move. Mark chapter 11 Verse 23, Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. Jesus himself gave us this weapon. He gave us a mouth and a wisdom which our enemies, no enemy can resist that mouth and that wisdom used by God, given to us by God. Mark 11 verse 23. 
Please read for us. For assuredly, uh -huh. I say to you, yes. whoever says to this mountain, be moved, uh -huh. and be cast uh -huh. the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, uh -huh. but believes that those things he yeah. will come to pass, yes. he will have whatever you say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you say to this mountain, not if you negotiate, if you say, you speak authoritatively, Remember, he has given you that mouth to speak. God is saying, if you say to this problem of your life, to that health challenge, to that financial challenge, to that academic crisis, to that marital issue, if you say with your mouth what you want to see, you will see what you have said. Battles are won by words before they are won by sword. What you say in the midst of your challenge is what you will see. Your confession in the face of opposition is your conclusion. What you say to the mountains is what the mountains will do. So say nothing, the mountains will do nothing. But say something and the mountains will respond. Today, I pray that God will open up your mouth. Your mouth will never be shut again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Personally, I come from a tribe in southwest Nigeria known for not keeping quiet. In the midst of anything, the man from the southwest part of Nigeria, where I come from, they don't keep quiet. They even say that any man that doesn't have a mouth or that is not bold to speak is a bastard. They say that all more bad on to logo that lenu all more If you can't speak boldly, they may be beating you, but you will still speak. They may be strengthening, threatening you, they may be stronger than you, and you know it. But there is a gene inside of you that won't stop your mouth from being closed. Your mouth will always speak. So they always triumph. Glory be to God. <laughs> they sing a song. They say, "Oh, oh, go, be walori, oh, more bad, don't shake any cock, huh? Ah, oh, go, be walori." That's because of the mouth. That oh, go, be walori means the battles don't overcome us. The battle don't overcome us. The sons of Ibadan land are not compared to any. That's what that song I just said literally means. They also say as a parable that Aji Shebi or Yola or Yoy Shebi Babainikan. That is to say, the people from this, my heritage is blessed. Our heritage is blessed. They say that people from this particular tribe don't compare to anybody. It's people that want to be like them. That's because they have found out Luke 21, verse 15. I have given you a mouth and a wisdom. Even in the midst of that sickness, you must still speak. Even in the midst of that financial crisis, your mouth must not be shut. Even in the midst of that failure, that struggle, that issue, you must be bold to speak what you want to see. If you choose not to speak to the mountains, they will remain. In life, you have to speak up to come up. You want to come up in life, you have to speak up to come up. You also have to speak out to come out. You need to speak up to come up. You need to speak out to come out of that grave, come out of that depression, come out of that pain, come out of that anxiety, come out of that stress, come out of that loss, come out of that bondage, come out of that opposition of the enemy. I have given you a mouth and a wisdom. That when you use it, your enemies are held handicapped. Glory to God. So, we must engage our mouth. And we must engage it to share the goodness of the Lord in the past. Can I tell you this? When you recall the testimonies, you are eulogizing God. When you recall testimonies of what God has done for you in the past, you are eulogizing God. You are praising God. You are you are you are psyching, as it were, 
the mind of God, the power of God. You are arousing him to battle when you share testimonies of what he has done. Also, when you share testimonies, many that's not happened to you before, but you hear the testimonies of others and you share it. You, it has the same effect. It has the same power. It has the same potential. The woman with the issue of blood, after she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she was made totally whole. And she went and told the people what had happened. And everybody came touching the hem of Jesus' garment. And the Bible says they were all made perfectly whole. So sharing these testimonies, whether it is your, of your personal experience or you just had it, you just had it, they carry the same power. And you must use your mouth to speak these testimonies. When you speak it, the devils will bow. David recalled what God has done. And he used his mouth to come out of the defeat the devil was trying to put him. He recalled when he was keeping his father's sheep. <laughs> testimonies don't have to be apples to apples. They can be parables to parables. David was not saying, I have fought a, a man before. But he's saying, I have fought an animal that, could, that was stronger than me before. <laughs> I have fought an animal that is stronger than me before. Maybe you have not fought uh, failure before. Maybe you have not fought disappointment before, but you have overcome sickness. You can tell failure and disappointment. Hey, listen to me. I have fought sickness before. And the same God that gave me victory over this sickness will give me victory over failure. I always tell people this, the same anointing that healed headache is the same anointing you need to heal cancer. The same anointing that healed headache or leg pain is the same anointing that is needed to heal liver cirrhosis. The same anointing, the same power. So when God heals you of headache, he cannot heal headache and leave leg pain. It's the same anointing. So if you have ever been healed of anything, the power of God is available to heal you of everything. This morning, you will not leave this service with whatever ailment you came with. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you open not your mouth, you will be led like a sheep to the slaughter. Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 32. If you don't open your mouth, you will end up in the slaughter. You will end up like a sheep that has been sacrificed. Act 8.32. Act chapter 8, verse 32. You must open your mouth. You must open your mouth and speak. And what do you speak? You speak the testimonies of our God. You share the greatness of our God. In the face of battle, you remind the, the devil that the same God that has done it in the past, he will do it again. You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. You have healed me in the past. You will heal me again. What's the beginning of that song? You have helped me in the past. You will help me again. Hey, you have helped me in the past. You will help me again. No one like our God. Hallelujah. Act of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 32. The Bible says the, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb, dumb, 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 can't speak, can't speak. Before his sharer, so opened he not his mouth. If you don't open your mouth to speak, they will scrape your skin. And they will cut off your head. If you don't open your mouth to speak, you will lose everything and still lose your life. That will not be your portion Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't open your mouth to speak, things will not get better. They will get worse. And life can be lost. So you must open your mouth. Don't be dumb before your enemies. Don't be dumb before problems of life. Don't be dumb before the issues of life. Don't be dumb before anyone threatening you. I have given you a mouth and a wisdom which your enemies cannot gainsay. No resist. You have a mouth. 
God has given you authority in that mouth. Uh -huh. God honors your, your confessions. God honors your testimonies. So you must unleash them from your mouth. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. One of the major attributes of a lion is his ability to roar. You must learn to roar in the face of challenges. Satan, you cannot have me. You cannot have myself. You cannot have my home. You cannot have my health. You cannot have my business. You cannot have my children. You must be able to roar this at all times. We are told by animal scientists that when the lion roars, you can hear it miles away. When the animal is hungry, he roars. When the animal is tired, he roars. When the animal is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is looking for what to eat, he roars. Even in the face of something bigger than him. I don't know if you've ever been to the zoo before. When the animal is angry, when the lion is angry, he roars. When people are trying to do funny things around him, he goes around looking for a way to escape. And then after a while, he just roars. You must roar like a lion. The devil, the Bible says, goes about as a lion, like a lion. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Looking for who to devour. He is not a lion. You and I are the real lions. Because Jesus Christ, our Father, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, is described as the lion of the tribe of Judah. So if the, the son of a goat is a goat, the son of a cow is a cow. The son of a lion is a lion. So you and I are the real lions. We must learn to roar. When you roar, in animal science, like I was saying, that roar can be eight miles away. <laughs> when you roar now, the problems you are facing and the problems you will face in the future, they hear you. <laughs> Did you get that? The lion roars, and within, if you are within some miles, you can hear it. So whether you are in 0.5 miles, or you are in, for example, 3 miles, you will still hear. If you roar at your problems now, the problems the devil is planning for you miles away or in the future, they will hear and they will fear. That's why the lion roars. When the lion roars, it does two things. It puts fear in its prey. And that fear, animal scientists tell us that it secretes a hormone from the body of the prey that the nose of the lion is sensitive to. So when the lion roars, the prey is scared. And when the prey is scared, the hormone comes out of the prey's body and then the lion can trace the prey from that smell to catch the prey. So when you roar, your problems, the mountains will be afraid of you. You must learn to roar. You must learn to roar. You must learn to, to roar. Very quickly, let me show us some seven lessons that we can get from this story of David. Using his mouth as a weapon to win the Goliath of life. What are some seven lessons from this Bible reading? This testimony response to the crisis of life. Number one, don't be intimidated by the size of your problem. Our God is bigger than that. Our God is bigger than them. So you can speak to them. The problem is smaller than your God and my God. So in other words, they are smaller than you. So you have dominion. You have authority. You have, you have power over them. When a person just enters the service of the military, I think they enter as a recruit. Mm -hmm. But when you are in Christ, you are a, you are a, you are a general. Mm -hmm. You can speak to the recruits and they will listen. Let me say the one I know very well. When you enter into, into school, all right, you enter as a freshman, but there are some that have been there in sophomore year, in junior year, and in senior year, they will not put somebody in junior high over a senior in 12th grade. No. 
the 12th grade will always be put over the, 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 the freshman. So you have been with the ancient of days. You are of the king of kings and the lord of lords. All these issues of life are like freshmen. You can speak to them and they will obey you. David was not intimidated by the size of Goliath, by the, <laughs> by the swag of Goliath. In fact, so Goliath had a lot of swag. He doesn't carry his own sword. Somebody carries a sword for him. David said, look at this man. I will finish you today. I will cut off your head. He described how he's going to destroy Goliath because he was not intimidated. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have all experienced some form of challenges. In fact, some of us are going through some challenges now, but we have overcome them already because we don't stop speaking. Because we will not stop speaking. Because the things we have spoken will come to pass. Woo! Oh, I wish you could join us this morning yeah. as an army of speakers, <laughs> as an army of testimony responders. God has done it before and he will do it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Who are you, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become as a plane. You will become as a plane. Don't be intimidated by the size of your problems. Our God is bigger than them. So be bold to speak to them. Number two, don't allow people scare you by their experience or by your present challenge. Don't let anybody put fear in you. God, our God, can do all things. Don't let them tell you that you cannot. Bible tells us, let no man disdain thy youth. Let no man look down on you. Let them not tell you you don't know what you are doing. Let them not tell you you don't have experience like Saul was telling David. Let no man despise thy youth. Don't listen to those old for nothing people who because they feel they can't do it or they didn't do it, you can't do it. I'm not the youngest and I'm not the oldest. So I am careful the advice and the encouragement I give to the younger ones coming after me. And I also watch my head from the advice those that are older than me give me. If anyone puts fear in me, I throw it away. I throw it away. I throw it away. Don't allow anyone put fear in you. Yes, you can. Because you have God inside of you. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You can overcome many challenges by the power of God at work in you. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly above all that you ever think or imagine according to his power at work in you. Not according to the power at work in another person. So don't allow people scare you by their experience. Or by their present challenge. Our God can do all things. Our God can do all things. There is nothing he cannot do. There is no mountains he cannot move. If he has said it, yes, he will do it. He has a record of proving his word. It's not about to stop doing it now. Oh Lord, oh my God, yeah, oh, you are mighty, oh. There is nothing that God, my God, your God cannot do. Don't limit God through the experience of man. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I jumped to my number three there. Number three lesson here. Don't judge the capacity of God by the experience of others. <laughs> don't judge the capacity of God by the experience of others don't judge the capacity don't rate God by the experience of others because they haven't seen God do it before doesn't mean God cannot do it because God didn't do it through them doesn't mean God can't do it through you 
don't limit, don't judge, don't rate the capacity of God. Saul was there all this while when Goliath was threatening Israel. The Bible says for 40 days. He spoke and even Saul could not respond. Saul was king at the time. With all the armies of Israel, with all the, 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 the military power that Saul had, he couldn't respond to Goliath. So he tried to tell David, you are a youth. And this man has been a man of war from his youth. David said, oh, okay. You want to hear resume? You want to see resume? You want to hear testimony? Let me give you one. One that you don't know. One that you cannot do or you didn't do. I was keeping my father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear and took one. King Saul, have you seen lion before? <laughs> have you attacked lion before? I don't mean as lion attack you. Have you attacked lion before? I went and I took the, the sheep out of his mouth. I broke the jaws. I broke the beard. Have you done that before? Okay. If you have not done that before, don't tell me my God cannot bring down this ungodly Philistine. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that. Your personal encounters with God comes to play in the face of battles. Your personal revelation of God. I have seen the Almighty God do some strange things. Hmm. Once upon a time, Bishop Oedipo was sharing a testimony that God told him to do something or God told him something and he was still questioning and querying God. He said, the Lord lifted him up, laid him flat, and dropped him on the ground. <laughs> Life. <laughs> the Lord carried him up, laid him flat in the air, and dropped, slammed him on the ground. He said, ah, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Now, God tell that kind of a man that there's something God cannot do. <laughs> He will tell you, get out of here. My friend, don't judge the capacity of God by the experience of others. Don't judge the capacity of God by the experience of others. Number four, as we try to wrap up this message this morning, no matter how long the Goliath of your life has been speaking, you should also speak and not stop speaking. No matter how long Goliath had been speaking for 40 days. David did not say, oh my goodness, this guy has been torturing us for 40 days. There's nothing we can do. He still spoke. Can I tell you this? No matter the curses that has been afflicting your family for years, that doesn't mean you should stop talking about it or talking to it. Speak to it. You are not late to the sin. You are right on time. And you can make the difference. The Lord can bring deliverance through your hand to the Philistine, to, to the Israelites. The Lord through your hand. Look at 1 Kings chapter 8. Chapter 5, I'm sorry. 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 8. Glory be to God. You are not late, and God can bring victory by your hands. You are not late to the sin. You are not late. You are not late. God can bring victory through your hands. First King, oh, Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter five, Second Kings. Hmm. Glory be to God. Second Kings five verse one. Please read that. So it was when Elisha, the man of God. Second Kings, Second Kings. Yeah, chapter 5, verses 8. Verses 1, verses okay. 1. Now, Second Kings 5, verses 1. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Hallelujah. Neymar was a leper, but God used him to deliver a whole nation. So your size or your inadequacies has nothing to do 
with whether or not you are going to overcome. God, if God can win a battle and rescue a nation from a 17-year-old David or a leper by the name of Naaman, God can do great things to you. God can rot victories. God can save your generation. God can save your lineage. God can save your children from the curses that your fathers, your grandfathers, the generations before you have suffered from. So you must speak no matter how long the Goliath has been speaking. No matter how long the Goliath has been on the scene, you must rescue your life. Rescue everyone around you by speaking. The problem the brothers of David and the children of Israel made was that when Goliath spoke, they were quiet. They were silent. For what? When David got there, David began to speak. <laughs> Goliath had not seen anyone speak like that before. That was one of the first shock he received. The problems of your life, I've never heard your voice before. That's why they are still speaking. The challenges you are going through, They've never heard you respond in your voice. They don't know what your voice sounds like. That's why they are still speaking. When you speak, they become silent. So no matter how long the Goliath or the issues of your life has been speaking, you must speak and not be quiet because your voice counts. Your voice matters. God can do great things through you. God can use you, little you, small you, inexperienced you, unknown you to wrought great victory in your family, in your community, in your nation, and in this world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number five, the same God that fought for you in the past is able to fight for you again. We learn from this story that the same God that fought for you in the past is still able to fight for you. He has fought for you in the past. He will fight for you again. For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is always ready to fight the battle of his, for his children at all times. Battle is battle. No matter how big or small, no matter who it is, a battle is a battle. And our God is the man of war. The Lord of hosts is his name. He is the mighty man in battle. He has never been defeated and can never be defeated. So if he has fought for you in the past, he will fight for you again. If he has fought for you in the past, he will fight for you again. I have good news for somebody today. God has not left you. God has not abandoned you. God has not left you. God has not abandoned you. He's ready to fight for you. But you must engage him with your mouth. You must engage him with the testimonies of your lips. And he will come forth and fight for you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, as we try to wrap up, number six lesson we learn from the story of David and Goliath as it relates to the kind of testimony response that you must give in the face of any battles of your life. Mothers, hear this. Don't stop speaking over your children, over your family, over your husband, over your business, over your career, over your ministry, over your health, over your finances. Don't stop speaking. God has created mothers to naturally speak. So speak, 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 speak. Huh. Glory be to God. God is not uh, a sexist. But there's something about mothers. There's something God put in motherhood that always makes them triumph. Is that ability to speak. Is that ability to talk. That's why when you read through Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, by faith, women brought back their dead to life. It's because the women don't stop speaking. Have you ever met a stubborn woman? She's worse than a stubborn man. She never stops speaking. She will always say her own. She always say what she wants. By faith. 
that speaking is a, 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 an evidence of faith. The Bible never said the men brought their young to life. By faith, the women brought back their dead back to life. There is something about women that God has put in them for victory. Is that ability to speak in the face of battle, in the face of defeat. So keep on speaking and God will keep on giving you the victory Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Number six, our God is the Almighty and nothing matches his power. The story of David shows us that. That no matter how mighty Goliath is, God is mightier than him. God is the Almighty. Do you know what that name means? Almighty. They are missing an L there. They spell Almighty as A L M I G H T Y. But the real spelling should be A L L M I G H T Y. Because our God has all the might, all the kind of power that exists. Financial power, he has. Spiritual power, he has. Physical power, he has. Mental power, he has. Social power, he has. Economic power, he has. All power in heaven and on earth belongs to him. He is the almighty, almighty. You and I, we are not almighty. You might be some mighty. You might have some physical strength, some uh, political power, some spiritual power, but you don't have all the power. But God, my God, your God, has all the power and Goliath has none. <laughs> Glory be to God. So the almighty God can overcome any other mighty man, any other mighty being, any other mighty fellow. No matter who is threatening your life, always remember there is a one that has the kind of power this person does not have. And that, power, that, man, that person is Jesus Christ. And he lives inside of you. And you want him to speak to that problem. So you to speak. Speak. Engage him by speaking to that problem. I see you coming out of that problem today. Amen. As we speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. Very soon I'm going to be releasing us to speak. You are going to say some dangerous things over any issue of your life. Any failure, stagnation, fear, any form of depression, anxiety, you are going to speak and your enemies will run back. The Bible says, when I lift up my voice and speak and cry out, my enemies will turn back. As you speak today, they will turn back in Jesus' name. Finally, number seven, remember this, that no matter who is against you or what is against you, if God is for you, you will overcome. If God is for you, you will win. No matter who is against you, everything about that encounter in 1 Samuel chapter 17 was against David. The time he came to the battle was against him. The weapons he had, uh, the weapons that Goliath had was against him. The experience that Goliath had was against him. The age that Goliath has was against him. The support that Goliath had because Goliath had his army, nobody was supporting David was against him. The defense apparatus on Goliath was an advantage that was against David. Goliath had helmets, he had kneecaps, he had breastplates, he had everything. David had nothing. Everything about that situation was against David. But there was one thing that was for David that was against Goliath. And that's all that mattered. Yeah. God was with David. Saul said, go and the Lord be with you. That's all that was for David. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So David had God on his side. And that's all that matters. If God be for you, the problems of life will never be able to overcome you. No matter who is against you or what is against you, as long as God is for you, you will always win. You will always triumph. You will always come out victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never forget that. And always say to yourself, God is with me. 
God is with me. Can you say it now? Say, God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. He said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. My God, when I caught the revelation of that word in 2006, my life changed. God spoke to me directly. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you. So every time I say to myself, God has not left me. God is with me. And if God, since God is with me, no one can win against me. No one, no battle of life can swallow me. No battle of life can see my back. No battle of life can have my head. No battle of life can win over me. No battle of life can have the final say. No battle of life can have the final laugh over me. Because God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And I triumph in all places by the grace of God Amen. that is with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Lift up those hands and just appreciate the Lord for his word this morning. Thank him. Thank him. Celebrate him. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for your word. If you have received anything from the Lord this morning, give him thanks. Give him praise. Celebrate him. Oh, Father, thank you. Unto you be all the glory of praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. This Mother's Day celebration, I want to pray for a group of people, whether they are mothers or fathers, male or female, young or old, who God is not with. There are some people God is not with. Those people are the people that are not members of his family. God is not with them. God is not with the wicked. God hates sinners. God hates sin. But he loves to make sinners saints. God hates sins in man. When he created man, he created man sinless. Sin crept in and spoiled the relationship. So God left man. God chased man out of the garden when sin came in. If you are not a child of God, if you are not living above sin, you are not with God and God is not with you. This morning, if you like, for God to be with you, to bring you back into the Garden of Eden. If you want God to go with you everywhere you go around the world, you must first give your heart to him. You must first surrender to him as your Lord and Savior. Therefore, this morning, with all joy and with all confidence, I want to give an opportunity to anyone under the sound of my voice who wants to say yes to Jesus and no to Satan. No matter how long you have been away, God will and can take you back. No matter why you left, no matter how bad you are now, if you return, he will restore you. If you return, he will repair you. If you return, he will renew you. This morning, this afternoon, or evening, whatever it may be around the world, if you'd like to say yes to Jesus, please bow your heads, close your eyes, and say this prayer of faith after me. Please, you can say this, maybe if you are saying this for the first time, or maybe if you were once a Christian and something happened and you backslid it, you can still say this prayer and God will restore you. You will return back to the Lord and the Lord will be with you. In the name of Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you this day that's as I am. I am a sinner and I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and wash me in your blood and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I am saved, 
I am born again. I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Please keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed as I pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones who have come to you today. I pray that the same grace that brought them to you will keep them in you for life. Lord, I pray that now that they've come for you, they've come to you, that you will keep them and preserve them until the day of your coming back in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will manifest your presence in their lives and prove to them that from now you are with them in the mighty name of Jesus. And on the last day when you come to take us all home, my Father, may our garment be white as snow, may no iniquity be found in us, and may we be ready and prepared to reign with you, our Master. Thank you, Father, for doing this. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, if you said that prayer, congratulations. You are now saved and you are now born again. And you are now a child of God. And God is now with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. So please, I'd like you to do one more thing. Reach out to us on any of our social media platforms. And let us know that you made this decision today. Mother's Day 2023 the 14th of May, 2023. Let us know you gave your heart to the Lord and someone on our team will reach out to you and uh, will help you grow and disciple you in the knowledge of God and to become the person that God has created you to be. You can send a message to us on all our social media platforms or you can send us an email at newbirth at tola.org newbirth at tola.org. That information is scrolling in the bottom of your screen right now. Take note of that and reach out to us and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the next three to four minutes, I'd like all of us to rise up on our feet this morning and begin to speak. Begin to speak to that problem. Begin to speak to that issue. Begin to speak to that challenge. Begin to speak to that crisis that is happening in your life. Speak what you want to say. Speak what you want to see. Say what you want to see. Say, speak to the mountains. Speak to Jordan. Speak to Goliath. Speak to the walls of Jericho. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are coming down now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mountains, you are coming down. Goliath, you are coming down now. Mountains, you are coming down now. Jordan, you are driven back now. Jericho walls, you are coming down now for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speak boldly this morning. Brade keleto sata, medi kalita kala prode shatua, raka poro poto separa maneko to para maneko separa dadi la ba, ekoro koto para bade bade poto zikata. Open your mouth wide this day and speak in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak against every curses. I speak against every curses. Every enchantment, every divination, every crisis, every issues of my life, of my lineage, of my generation, of my nation, of my community, of my family, of this ministry, of every member and partner of this ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are coming down now. You are coming down now. Come down now in the name of Jesus. I cut off your head. I cut off your power. I kill everyone that is supporting or sponsoring every crisis in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Yaba. For the Lord kill it, and the Lord make it alive. Prokoroni mama supede yasha. Baka ta 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 la rosha. Latu sapra de kradita da bade. Baka sha ta ta ta. Ila roto preka ta sita ye. Shata mula nonde. Brodi ala sabadia. Baka ne sotoash. In the name of Jesus. Laka sha ta bala 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 ba. Mountains be moved, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Mountains of failure, mountains of poverty, mountains of sickness, mountains of all kinds in the name of Jesus Christ be destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Only Paraga over this church, every mountain be destroyed, every Goliath. Come down now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have commanded. Amen. It is done. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That centurion said to Jesus, I am a man under authority. Matthew 8, verse 9, 8 and 9. I said to one, go, and it goes. And I said to one, comes, and it comes. This morning, this day, in the name of Jesus Christ, all you have said to go, will go. All you have said to come, will come. All you have said to go down, are gone down. In the name of Jesus Christ, on this Mother's Day, every mother, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor. You will not labor in vain. Amen. You will not build and another man inhabit. Amen. You will not plant and another man harvest. Amen. Every of your children will call you blessed. Amen. On the day of their celebration, the day of your celebration, the day of your husband's celebration, your whole family will be there Amen. in joy and in peace, Amen. in unity and in love, Amen. and in celebration of the Lord, Amen. and in massive prosperity. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wave those hands to Jesus. Give him praise and glory. Father, thank you. Hosanna to you, Jesus. Thank you. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Let's take a couple announcements. Please be reminded that all our services going forth from today to the 28th of May, which is Pentecost, um, will be online only, exclusively online. Please take note of that. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And like I said, even on uh, Sunday, the 28th, chances are that service also will be um, online. All right, but we'll communicate that with you by the grace of God as the program goes on. Um, 28th of May is Pentecost Day, and we know what happened on the day of Pentecost after the order of Mark, Act chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4. Believe God with us, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. All our services this month continues as regular, as normal. Um, and they shall be all supernatural mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wednesday the 17th, join us for our recharge service. Um, Saturday the 20th, join us for our weekend family breakfast prayer. Sunday the 21st, join us for our special anointing service. We call it the Activate Service. And uh, on Wednesday the 24th of May, Join us again for our special recharge service. And uh, our services on the 27th of May. Join us again for our weekend family breakfast prayer. All of these services have been packaged by God to bless you, to turn your life around. Don't miss them for anything. The Lord bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise on our feet once again and give God thanks for today's service. Let's bless his holy name. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Lord, we adore you. There is no one like you. Thank you for today's service. Thank you for everyone that you brought. 
Thank you for your word that you sent. Thank you for answers to our prayers. Blessed be your name forever, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Father, thank you for everything you've done for us today. Lord, we receive all your blessings and answers to our prayers with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the impact of your word. Thank you for the testimonies of your word. Thank you for answers to prayers. Thank you for everyone that you brought. Thank you for every mother and mother-to-be that you brought to this service and that you have connected to this church and to this ministry. Blessed be your name forever. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now go in peace. Return with testimonies. Every day of this week are the days the Lord has made. Therefore you and I shall rejoice and be glad in them. Amen. Nothing and no one shall bother us in the name of Jesus. And it is well with us. Amen. All through this month we will see the glory of the Lord. And we shall experience the Holy Ghost and his power. Amen like never before. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. amen and amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Is it well with you and your family? Yes. yes, it is well. Is it well with your spirit, soul, and body? Yes. yes, it is well. Is it well with all our mothers and mother figures? Yes, yes it is well. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our services online today and for coming to church. Uh, God bless you all for joining the service in person and online. And may the blessings of the Lord rest upon us all Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. My name again is Pastor Deeran also known as Pastor D Plus from the House of Light Assembly. And I'm saying this to you prophetically and with confidence that no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances you are going through right now, please never forget this, that God loves you. God still loves you. Even in the midst of that challenge, God still loves you. Number two, don't forget that Jesus is Lord. He remains Lord forever. And number three, Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. Be ready, be expectant, be prepared. It can be any moment from now. It will be any moment from now. So don't give up, don't lose your guard, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Have a great week, and the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, happy Mother's Day to our mothers and mothers-to-be. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.